good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to B Varsity Live. I'm Zach Ewing with Trevor Horn here in the Dignity Health Studio, and we are set for another week of football action, volleyball action, golf tennis action, action, everything else. And then coming Monday, we have golf. We got yeah. jam packed part of the year here, and we have a jam packed show today. I'm excited. I've been thinking about this for the last two days about how much fun this hour is going to be. I, you know, we're talking golf. We've got a very special golfer in studio. We've got another gentleman that we just did a story on sitting in the back with his daughter. And then we've got a newly promoted sports director coming in to talk football. So uh, let's, let's go. Paul Goal is going to be mad if he finds out you called him a gentleman. Maybe not. He doesn't really get mad. Oh, Lena's here now, too. All so. right. We're, we're good, then. We got, we got all, the, uh, all the special guests in the house. Okay. Well, our first one is Lexi Keene. She's a sophomore at Stockdale. She is... Uh, Fifteen going on forty-five. Wow, <laughs> you went you went there, did you? Now I, I was going to say that you are probably the best golfer, girls high school golfer in town. I, I mean, am I out, offline saying that? I don't know how modest you are. Uh, I guess it's all up to you. Quite modest, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, I mean, I I think it's safe to say you were our golfer of the year last year, and uh, at least among the candidates to be again this year. And the area championships are coming up Monday at North Kern golf course. So we, we wanted to have Lexi in and to talk a little bit about, uh, what the season has been like and, and, uh, what, what she expects on Monday. So the, the high school girls golf season, from what I can tell has been a little bit strange. There's been some injuries. There's been some different things going on where, where Liberty and you guys, Stockdale, probably the best two teams in town have not really been at full strength very often, especially not at the same time. So, Nobody really knows maybe who's on top, right? Right. I mean, it's anybody's game on anyone on any given day, and that's the fun part about it. Yeah, I mean, I I, I know you'd love to to beat Liberty by a hundred strokes every time out, but that wouldn't be as as much fun as this is either. No. Uh, so so Lexi, again, just a sophomore. She's the daughter of Jim Keen, who used to coach golf there at Stockdale, and is now the athletic director. And uh, you know, when I first heard your dad talk about you, it was, oh, by the way, my daughter plays golf and in my head you know I know how much Jim likes golf it's she's probably been playing since she could walk since she could pick up a club but that's not the case no that's not the case at all in fact you were a dancer from day one Uh, so that's a pretty interesting transition how did that how did that come about Uh, I mean were you just not at all interested in golf and then pop one day you were yeah I my dad always tried to get me interested when I was little he always took me out and we always had fun but I was always a dancer and I always loved dance I wanted to go to Juilliard I wanted to be on Broadway and then one day I just realized that that's what that wasn't where my heart was Hmm. and then I picked up golf at 12 years old and I've loved it ever since let me tell you as as a father of an almost four-year-old saying look honey the Masters is on TV is not going to do it no. They just, yeah, they just can't get interested at that Because my brother played, and I always watched my brother, and I loved to watch my brother, but I was never interested for myself until I picked up a club. Interesting. And when was that? Um, when I was 12, I started playing. So seventh grade? Yeah, seventh okay. grade. So, and love at first swing? I mean, what... what yeah, I, I just liked that as long as I kept working hard and as long as I kept doing what I needed to do, I was going to get better, and I was going to improve, and I was going to do better things. It's a little bit like dancing in that respect, right? Yeah. Dance is a little bit more subjective as to where the directors are deciding who gets what parts and who does what. But golf is a very, very objective. But in in both aspects, you are very much alone on an island in your own head, and you have to be a very strong individual. Do you think that that, you know, being a dancer for so long kind of helped you in that mentality um, aspect of playing golf where, you know, you knew that if you had, you know, a bad tee shot that you could give yourself that time to walk up and get that nice second shot off the green or yeah. if you're in the rough or wherever it is. That's always nice about golf is you've got a minute or two before your next shot. I mean, in dance, if you mess up, if you mess up a routine or if you fall, you have to get right back up and you keep going. And I feel like that's kind of helped me in golf is when I stumble, I just keep going and it'll get better. Cause I have time. I can make it work for myself. And I know you had you had one heck of a summer this last year. What were some of the highlights of your summer? Um, I started at Rio Bravo, which is a tough golf course, and I shot a 71. And I was low round of that entire tournament, the boys included, by four or five strokes. Wow. And Take that, boys. Yeah. And then I played at Sundale, which is one of my other favorite courses, and I shot a 68. That was my first time shooting under 70 in a tournament. And then I can't the next- shoot a 68 through <laughs> nine. I was going to say I shot a 68 on eight holes once. <laughs> yeah. And then the next week we played my home course, Seven Oaks, which that's where I started playing. And I shot a 66. And I now co-hold the 
women's course record with a 66. And you are 16? 15. 15. Okay. So you got, you got quite, quite a lot of time to, uh, to improve on that, but that's easier said than done, of course. You get into high school season, has it been a little bit more up and down? I mean, or have you been able to build on that momentum? Um, I feel like I'm doing all right. I'm kind of keeping a good momentum. I'm doing well in the league tournaments, the tournaments that actually count. Um, none of my scores have been substantially low this season, but everything's been pretty consistent. So I'm just waiting for a day where everything clicks. Do you approach rounds with a score in mind? Hey, I'd love to get below 72. I'd love to get below par. Or is it just, I want to hit the ball well and we'll see what, what happens. Yeah. With the I just, I, I like to think that if I do everything that I need to do and I hit every shot the best I can, then it'll all add up to a good number. I feel like when I put a number in my head, I trip myself out. You, you don't seem like one who's easily tripped out though. Did she, that was close. It was close, but it wasn't what I was looking for. Uh, we were talking with Lexi a few minutes before the show, and uh, what was the what was the exact phrase she used? Oh, it was a trip. Oh, it was a trip. <laughs> yeah, and and, and Lexi responded. Trevor said, "Well, that's something that that I used to say in high school back in 1972." Thank you. And uh, <laughs> and no, Trevor, you were born in 1979. 19- Liar. Uh, anyway, Lexi responded by what? saying she was an old she was an old soul. I mean, uh, and, and that's sort of. That's kind of a golf thing, too, in, in the respect of you can kind of, you know, you're out on a nice walk, and despite what Mark Twain said, you can actually have a good time, especially if you're a pretty good player. Uh, does that fit in with your, uh, with your personality? I mean, just that sort of, I'm out here, you know, I can keep the stress level down, I'm just relaxed? Yeah, I believe that just because I'm such a, a my own person, that golf is very individualized. It's one, it's one of the most individualized team sports that you can play. So I feel like you have to be your own person. You have to be your own player. I feel like that carries over into my life outside of golf because I'm very individualized, I would like to believe. She listens to Fleetwood Mac. Which I, A plus in my book. Yeah, no (laughs) doubt, no doubt. Guys of our age who are like, we're like approaching middle age, that's like, it's still alive, baby. Still alive. So uh, how how did you get into that? I mean, is that your parents' influence on you or how did... Um, well, my parents definitely listen to that. They love Elton John. They they just went to an Eagles concert, which I was so jealous they didn't take me. But I've, I've always been around it, and then I kind of branched out when I was in like junior high, and then I started listening to it again, and I just liked the artistry and liked how much feeling and meaning there was behind music that was produced before 2000. So I listen to a lot of that music just because I feel like there's more of the artist in that music. Is, is there still music like that? Is there is there current music you like because you see that in it, or are you still sort of searching for that? Yeah, I, there's some. Some of it I feel like is kind of repetitive and pointless, but I like Ed Sheeran a lot. Okay. And like Lana Del Rey, a lot of those artists, I feel like they have a lot of personal experience and artistry in their music. Lana Del Rey also likes to do a lot of covers. Yeah. And she's really good at doing a lot of 70s and 80s covers. I really love. That's good. what I love about her. Yep. You're not allowed to listen to music while you play, are you? Not in tournaments, no. But okay. My pre-game routine, I always listen to music. I always have my headphones in until right before I tee off. It kind of calms me down. I'm a music person. Do you have a specific playlist for that purpose, or is it Um, whatever? No, I just kind of shuffle my music, and whatever comes on, if I like it, if I'm feeling it, then I'll leave it on, and if not, then I'll just skip it. Do you now? Now, have you had tournaments where you haven't been able to do that? I mean, does it really affect your play? Can you? Our first tournament of the year, my coach was like, "All right, give me your phones, give me your iPod. You're not using them," and I was very upset about that. And I went to my coach. I said, "Coach, I need this to warm up. That's my thing. That's how I get in my zone." And she said, "Okay," and she gave it to me, and that was it. She's never tried to ever do that again. We're talking about Shannon, right? Yes. I cannot imagine Shannon Evils being like hard line oh she wasn't it. hard yeah. it was actually our other it was actually our other coach Maga- uh, Janine McGowan okay because they're both co-coaching this year they're both doing a really good now, job Janine's a little more hard she's like, a little bit yeah. more hardcore and she just didn't understand that we use our music when we warm up so I had to explain that to her but uh, Neblis knows that's my thing and nobody talks to me when I warm up because I have my music in and I can't hear you anyways <laughs> <laughs> reminder Zach don't try to interview her before her rounds I would never do that anyway <laughs> that's that's focus time man by the way going back to music does it does it help my cause that I may miss next Thursday's show for a specific reason? And that's because I'll be returning from the Pearl Jam show in Denver that day. Does that help? I all? think that's fair. Okay. That's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> that, uh, I'm kind of jealous. Yeah, you should be. <laughs> You're so old. Hey, <laughs> Trevor's been talking about this Pearl Jam concert for like... Since the day you since hired Since the day me. I hired you in July. Yeah, it's, it's like... It's going to be the highlight of your year. It's, it's like the Christmas last show morning. of their year and a half long tour. They don't have an opening act. They're going to start at 8 p.m. I'm hoping that the show gets over at like 6 a.m. I don't know. 
They got okay. a huge set list. Well, we got a few minutes left with Lexi. Uh, Monday's the area championships. It's it's the first time you could technically be eliminated from the season. I mean, your season could yeah. end on Monday if you don't have a good round. Do you feel that pressure? I mean, how do you feel going into Monday? Um, I don't really feel pressure, but I try not to pressure myself in any tournament. I feel like if I go and I do well and I play every shot like I should, then I should have a good chance of doing well, maybe being the low round because I, I did win last year. So hopefully right. I can match that this year. That would be very good. But I'm just trying to advance to the next round. There's a lot of good girls, and it could go anywhere. Yeah, for, for those who don't know, the area golf term is just one round. So it's, it's one of those, if you have a bad day. You could be out. Yeah, you don't, you don't get that chance like a three-round tournament where you can, you can make up for it. And you, you, so because of that, winning multiple area titles is really difficult, even if you are the best golfer, because you just have one bad day golf out of those four years. Golf goes either way. Right. Uh, I want to ask her a question, actually. Okay, go ahead. With Stockdale and being at that school, I want to tie it into, has there been a lot of buzz on campus about the football team and what – the new head coach, Brett Shelton, has been able to do and what these guys have yeah. been able to kind of, you know, after that. And we'll we'll see the highlight later of the game-winning kick that beat. Were you at the game Friday night? I was watching the B-Varsity broadcast. Love it. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what I like My to hear. My dad and I were watching the B-Varsity broadcast, and we went wild in our house. See? The, the, the impact that we have when they can't make it to games, here we are broadcasting games, so you – for whatever reason, you can't make it down to the game. You were able to watch it live. It was and great. You guys on the golf course don't get a lot of spectators usually outside no. of parents and things. Uh, but Monday, for those who haven't seen you play, what? How do you describe your golf game? Are you are you pretty long off the tee? I mean, is it your short game that carries you usually? Um, I feel like I'm a pretty well-rounded player. When I do hit the tee ball well, I'm a pretty decent driver of the ball. But when I play really well my putting is a strength that I like to use just because I feel like I can make a lot of putts when I'm confident and as long as my confidence is up then I'm typically a pretty good putter okay is that something that happens early in the round I mean you, you'll know I've I'll got know it before I, I tee off okay I'll, I'll know based on my practice and based on my rhythm and based on everything that's going on what do you focus on when you putt um I really just focus on line and speed okay so there's I know some people who will just try to I think about something else and let their body take over, let that natural, you know, second nature repetition take over, but you're really focused on the actual. Yeah. I just, I feel like if you get the right speed, it's not going to break too much and you'll be inside of two feet, something that you can just tap in. So right. as long as you get the speed right, I feel like that's my main focus. Such perspective. Is that how you feel when you're on the mini golf course, Eck? I oh, mean, I haven't played mini golf in a long <laughs> time. I haven't played. I have scars on my putter from the last time I played a real golf. So I, I sort of quit the game for my blood pressure. I have not played since I've been in town, but I played like three rounds right before I left. My brother and I said, all right, this is our last hurrah. Let's get like three rounds in as quickly as we can. Well, uh, Lexi, we got just a minute left, but who else? I, I want you to give a shout out to some of your competitors. Who else should people keep an eye on Monday at the area? Honestly, it could go any way. I mean, my own teammate, Jessica Park, uh -huh. great player. She's got a lot of strength in her game. She's a senior. She's been playing really well this season. Allie Wilson, also on my team. She shot uh, 78 last week at Buena Vista, played really well. Also, the entire Liberty team, Macy Mills, Taitlin Alvarez, Mackenzie Stan, and Vanessa Watkins from Highland. There's so many girls that could just go any way at any day. So it'll be a lot of fun at no noon on Monday, is that right? I believe it's noon. A noon, noon start at North Kern on Monday is the Girls Golf Area Championship. And from there, you go, could the top two teams go to Team Valley, which yes. is the following week, I believe. Yeah, at Madeira at, Country Club. And that's in Madeira. And then the week after that, I think the top 15 individuals from the area go to the individual, to the individual section. Where, where is that this year? Buena Vista. And that's back at Buena Vista. So a lot of local uh, postseason golf going on, and we will follow it all here on B-Varsity. Lexi Keen of Stockdale, thanks so much for joining us. Thank uh, you. And thanks for sharing all your talents with us, dancing, music, and uh, and everything else. Well, and golf. And thanks for watching B-Varsity. <laughs> oh, wait, you golf? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's Lexi Keen. Trevor and I'll be back with Coach Paul Gola and company from Bakersfield High coming up next on B Varsity Live. Come on, Nick. One thing about living in Kern County is all the great schools. So one thing, one thing, one thing, we can all agree on.
Pearl School is the number one financial institution in all Kern County. Take advantage of our low fixed mortgage rates, including 60-day lock-in at no cost to you. Purchase or refinance your home today. Kern School, the biggest little credit union. Join CSUB Roadrunners Basketball for the annual Blue Gold Scrimmage presented by Hall Ambulance Saturday, October 18th at the Icardo Center. The event is free and it's your chance to see the 2014 men's and women's basketball teams watch team scrimmages, get autographs, and meet the Roadrunners. Doors open at 6 and fans can enjoy select $1 concessions from Uncle's Barbecue. For more information, log on to GoRunners.com. Join us for the 2014-15 CSUB Basketball Blue Gold Scrimmage presented by Hall Ambulance Saturday, October 18th at the Icardo Center. Doors open at 6 and mission is free. Hi, my name's Harold Raymond here from Assign Factory and Graphic Shop. Our Big 14 actually is the garment industry, screen printing, embroidery. We cater to a lot of schools. Uh, currently, when we do our screen printing, we can average out about 1,500 shirts a day without a problem. T-shirts to hoodies, beanies, hats, decals for the st uh, students' vehicles or parents' vehicles or anything. We have an 18,000 square foot facility and we do pretty much everything that goes with the graphics world. Reach for the top with Pinnacle Performance Institute. With individualized training for speed, agility, and strength, Pinnacle Performance will help athletes of all ages achieve in the field, on the court, and on the track. Whether you're a youth athlete, a high school athlete, or you're just trying to stay in shape, you will learn how to do it the right way. Give us a call at 374-FAST or come by and visit our new facility at 12757 Jomani Drive. Whether you're a high school athlete, a youth athlete, or an adult looking to get into shape, we have something for everyone at Pinnacle Performance Institute. Whether you're a builder in town or a do-it-yourselfer, EA Shields is everything you need to help make your job easier and affordable. Like ready-mix concrete, rock and gravel, pipe and fittings. Yes, EA Shields has it and they deliver. For bigger jobs, they rent bobcats, jackhammers, and trailers. EA Shields has been in the business since 1949. They make their own products and they're your one-stop shop in septic system installation. Give them a call at 325-5969. That's 325-5969. If you don't want the best, then call the rest. Kern Business Journal contains news and information from local business leaders and organizations. Topics include agriculture, health and medical, energy, real estate, and more. Visit 